Hollywood in Looper recognizes silver as payment method and store of value. I just came back from seeing Ryan Johnson's latest movie, Looper, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Bruce Willis, Emily Blunt, and a favorite metal of all time, Silver, in a supporting role. That's right, Silver plays a minor but very critical role in this flick. But before I go on, please let me warn you that although I won't be blurting out spoilers, I will be describing some of the scenes. Therefore, if you wish to have a completely unspoiled viewing experience, please watch the movie and then come back here. From IMDb, in 2072, when the mob wants to get rid of someone, the target is sent 30 years into the past, where a hired gun awaits. Someone like Joe, who one day learns the mob wants to close the loop by transporting back Joe's future self. Obviously, this is a science fiction flick, although it has great underlying meaning and little less action than I expected. There are long conversation and character development scenes devoid of gunfire and explosions, so once in a while it felt a little like I was watching a director's cut. But I digress. First, let me start by asking you to guess how these hired guns got paid by the bosses from the future. In silver, I believe they used 50 ounce bars with unique QR code like engraving. This is the main reason for silver even being in the movie, as a form of payment for services rendered. You may not think this is anything, but I believe the symbolism of this directorial choice is huge. There's only one time you see paper currency in the movie, in the montage of the main character's life in China. He's shown blowing through an entire box full of futuristic renminbis. I'm sure the director wasn't really going for anything here, but of course, I see the symbolism everywhere, including this scene. While the hard store of wealth is locked in a vault to represent the lasting riches, paper is being spent left and right. I also spotted a fun sub-point related to China. There is a scene in which the protagonists discuss their next move. One of them wants to go to France. The other one insists on going to Beijing. The director spent extra time on this scene to make sure the point was driven home. In the next 30 years, you want to be in China, not Europe. Of course, this is what Jim Rogers, Jim Sinclair, and Peter Schiff have been talking about for years, warning everyone that in the 1800s you want to be in London, in the 1900s in New York, and in 2000 you want to be in Singapore or Beijing. Second, silver is used like money in scenes where characters exchange it for other goods. There are scenes in which the characters plop down bars of silver in exchange for entertainment or ammunition. I was blown away by the fact that even though the action is set in the near future, there's no sign of paper currency, electronic money or scanning or tattoo money or swiping of the credit chips or credit cards, just boom, silver goes on the table and goods come off the table. Interestingly enough, silver bars are being mentioned as a store of wealth as well. Many times throughout the movie, the protagonist's stash is used as a bargaining chip between friends or enemies, employees and bosses. You can hear lines like, do this for half of my silver, or take my entire silver stash. One of the scenes towards the end shows silver bars being scattered across a rural road with one of the characters standing on top of it, and the plot is assuming secure future for the characters because of this newfound wealth. Here's how Austin Chronicle addresses this very point. It made sense then to make the world feel as desperate as possible and make you realize that if the main character loses that silver, he's in a very bad place. So even mainstream newspapers are addressing this very point. Third, gold is there too. I won't tell you exactly how it's used, but I can say that it's also a form of payment. Of course, Hollywood did its usual screw up in portraying someone handling large quantities of gold. In the movie, you could see the henchman waving around a bank of gold bars like it's paper mache, when in reality it would be much heavier and harder to handle. Fourth, there's even a lesson in how not to store silver. The main character has a pretty obvious vault safe in the floorboards under the rug with a five-digit combo lock. The inside of the vault is lined with silver bars, hundreds of them. Hey, at least he didn't keep the money in an ETF or offshore storage facility or in a bank. The moral here is clear. If he just separated his stash like we all know, he'd be able to access portions of it while he was on the run. Instead, the bad guys walked through the doors, went straight for the safe, and unloaded it. 
Interestingly, in this scene, the director mentioned several trips that henchmen would, would need to take in order to grab all 400 plus bars of silver. So that was accurate. Fifth, the future is apparently full of guys who lost faith in fiat currency, but also somehow discovered another Comstock load. The amount of silver being used is pretty amazing. If the main character sat on around 500 bars after saving about half of all his income, this means that he banked around 1,050 ounce bars of silver for a combined total of 50,000 ounces or 1.7 million in today's dollars. If every looper, one of these hired assassins, was being paid in 50 ounce silver bars, that would actually put a small dent into today's physical markets. And finally, the most important point I carried out of the movie theater is that silver is entering our collective consciousness. Little by little, like raindrops forming into a flood, silver is increasingly being used as money in popular culture. This movie being just the latest example. Since deep down we're still using our reptilian brains that are susceptible to fight or flight responses and repetition, I feel like if the pop culture keeps hammering the point that silver is money, it will soon reach its critical mass and Joe Sixpack will one day want to buy your used car with silver because he saw it in a movie and his friend did the same. So big and major props to the director Ryan Johnson and the cast of Looper. Everyone did an amazing job. And this silver bug is very happy. Looper is in theaters now. Go see it. It's a great movie. And see for yourself the role silver plays in this most recent example of Hollywood pop culture.